Hi folks, good afternoon. It is Wednesday, April 22nd, and I am thrilled to be with you this evening. I hope that you are settled in, got a good cup of coffee, got your Bible, and got something to write on because we are going to take a very intimate look uh, as soon as we break into chapter 15 in the book of Exodus. So uh, just go ahead, settle back, get ready. I have got to share this over to our group page. So if you will give me just a second, I'm going to share the love over there, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. As you as you hop on, go ahead and hit that uh, that share button and get that over on your page as well. When you uh, when you get on, go ahead and say hello. Let me know uh, who all is here, who's watching, uh, all of that good stuff. As I am trying to slide on over, I'm almost there. All right, let's see. I think I'm seeing uh, uh, Marianne Carter. Hi, Ms. Marianne. How are you doing tonight, lady? I hope you and Mr. Mike are doing good. I hope you got all of your stuff out today. And uh, um, I had some fun out uh, putting that stuff out on your fence row. Let's see here. Uh, Keith Frankenberger, my buddy. I am so glad to see you here. Dina Smith is in the building. So glad that uh, Miss Dina is here. I am, again, I'm sharing, guys, right now so we can get as much coverage as we can, get it uh, broadcast out there as far and wide as we possibly can. So all you gotta do, hit that share button, folks. Hit the share button, that's one time. And let's see, I've got one more time to hit it, and that's it right there, right there. Let's see here, boom. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm in. Sarah DeVazier is here. Lisa Lee is here. Miss Denise is here. All right. We have got all kinds of folks that are uh, locking in, loading, and I am about to get on over to see who all is here. Uh, if, you're, if you're here, if you're just now coming on in, go ahead and say hello. Let me know who all is watching. Uh, lots and lots and lots of folks here. Uh, I see Mary Weddington's here. Jack and Sandy is in the building. Gail Harris is in the building. Johnny Smith is in the building. Good to see all you folks. Uh, I, I, I am looking so forward to the day real soon that I can actually uh, just, just hug your neck, folks. I miss y'all so much, and I, I'm so uh, so lonely. I, I, I can't wait to see you guys. Uh, Linda Morgan's here. Sandy Gray is here. So glad to see each and every one of you. you got a great crowd. Uh, we're going to be uh, wrapping up the 14th chapter in the book of Exodus tonight. So if you want to go ahead and get your Bibles and turn it on over, that we're going to be in Exodus 14. And uh, I really, really want to get over and to uh, get into chapter 15. There is just, just some interesting stuff in chapter 15 that uh, I'm hoping we can uh, definitely get into. Uh, let's see. The Hanners are on here. Glad to see that. Pam and Larry are here. Judy Davis is here. There's Teresa Young. Hi, Teresa Young. How's everybody at the Young House tonight? Y'all doing good out there? Jeff working? Let's see, Larry and Pam. Oh, man, big old crowd tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, is it raining where you are tonight? Uh, I'm here at the church tonight, so yeah, it's, it's definitely raining here, here on the church campus. Uh, the Harris's are here. I love it. I love it. Make sure you got your coffee. Or uh, some good old sweet tea. Let's see here, Johnny. Yes, yeah, sir, Johnny. I'm, I'll miss you, you brother, like tons. Um, make sure you got your Bible. Make sure you got something to write on tonight. Tonight we're going to take a, a, again like a little different turn. Um, hopefully we can get into uh, chapter chapter fifteen tonight. Uh, if uh, there's Bobby Aston, there is Bobby and Sherry. Hi guys, so glad y'all are. Are hanging out with us tonight. It's uh, it is my pleasure to have you here. Uh, Beverly McGraw's in the building. Abby DeVazier's in the building. Oh yeah, we got a good old crowd tonight. So glad to see all y'all. Jeff is getting off work. Should be home soon. I love it. I love it, uh, guys. Just as a uh, just as a, a reminder, don't forget that your comments. I'm going to see them about 20 seconds later than than what I'm saying something. So uh just uh, you know just kind of remember that Paula DeVazier, uh Paula DeVazier Owens is here. Miss Denny is here. Uh all right, all right. Good old crowd here. Uh as we are kind of making our way in before we actually officially get started tonight, I would just love your thoughts on uh, what what you've seen 
uh, out of chapter 14 over the past two to three weeks that uh, that we have been. Uh, man, and there's my buddy TJ Scott from Louisville, Kentucky. Glad to see you in and hanging out with me, buddy. Uh, what What is it that has stood out to you as we have dissected uh, chapter 14? Uh, here in the book of Exodus. I know this is, uh, it, man, you know, it's just a, uh, it, it's a powerful passage of scripture. We've studied it for years, uh, you know, as little kids and, and Bible school and, and all that good stuff. So uh, what what is it that uh, that we have kind of brought out that might have got your attention that you can apply today? What What is it about the the, the chapter of, of Exodus 14? Oh, just love, love, love to... Uh, so get your thoughts on here. Uh, man, everybody come on in saying hello. I love that. If you see somebody you know on here, hey, would you just hey, give them a quick shout out there. Ask them how they're doing, what's going to go on. Uh, we'll see you here. Heath DeVazier's in the building. Glad to see Mr. Heath out here. All right. Good crowd. Good crowd tonight. Again, thoughts on Exodus 14. As uh, as we kind of uh, move on in, uh, just again, just love your thoughts. Uh, the complete departure, if you will, from uh, from uh, Egypt. You know they've been in bondage for years. You know some four hundred years, and uh, all of a sudden they're free. I mean they're just they're just free, and. Uh, now then, they're they're moving, and God kind of you know kind of sends them on what what appears to be a wild goose chase, and uh, you know puts them up in a uh, in a lose lose situation. There we found out in the first part of the chapter. Uh, I just uh, I just love your thoughts. Then all of a sudden, you know, uh, we see that uh, you know God has gone before them in a in a pillar of cloud by day a pillar of uh, fire by night to lead the way. Uh, and then all of a sudden, that Red Sea parts. And uh, it just kind of baffles my mind. You know, just to be honest with you. Billy's finishing her college biology assignment and then she's going to go, good, good, good. Get Miss Billy Billy. Get her in here hanging out here. Let's see here. Man, we have got all kinds of great stuff here. Let's see. Uh, what did Mary and Carton, it happened in one day. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, the crossing of the Red Sea actually happened in less than a day, just a few short hours. So that is definitely kind of mind boggling. I see Rita Johnson is here. Glad to see Miss Rita. Glad to see Miss Rita. Let's see Pam, just as God had all the details worked out for the Israelites. Uh, let's see, let me get back up here. So he has all the details worked out for us too. Oh, absolutely, that's Larry. Uh, absolutely. So here's what's so obvious in hindsight makes me wonder what I missed that God said. You know, Miss Denny, that's probably, uh, you know, one of the most powerful statements I've, I think I have, I've seen in a long time. You think about this, what appears so obvious in hindsight makes me wonder what I miss that God is showing me now. Man, how can you apply that to, to you, to, to each of you? What do you think you might be missing, knowing that God is in complete control? He's got, you know, everything already worked out. So, what do you think? What What do you think that that you might be missing that God's showing you? Man, what a powerful statement! That's a that's one of those that just kind of hits you in the face, isn't it? So, just you know, something to think about. Uh, Miss Mary, amazing how such a little time it took to cross. Oh yeah, I, it still baffles me that uh, the the sea had to open that much in order for, you know, three, three and a half million people to cross the Red Sea in that short amount of time. I mean, it, you, we're talking, you know, miles and miles. And so I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just baffled with this. I mean, I'm just, I'm just baffled completely. Uh, we want to uh, continue to remember the folks that's been on our prayer list. Uh, I, I know it seems like we may have gotten away, but we really haven't. Because there's been just, uh, you know, a lot of folks that we've been praying for. Continue to remember uh, Brother Norval. Uh, still still got lots and lots and lots of pain in his back, so we want to uh, continue to remember Brother Norval. Uh, if you have other prayer requests that you would like to uh, make sure that the word gets out, please, please go ahead and, uh, and list that here in the comments so that we can get that word out and we can uh, kind of get that recorded here. 
uh, any prayer requests that you have at all, please go ahead and share. And then uh, uh, we will kind of discuss those. Ma'am, how Jessica Jones Tidwell? Glad to have you. Yes, Jessica Jones Tidwell. Hi, Jessica Jones Tidwell. Thank you for being our guest at Ridgewood tonight. Glad you're joining us. Tell us where you're from. Are you are you local? Are you here in Fort City, uh, St. Francis County? Let us know. Oh, yeah. Uh, Beverly, is Dan watching with you? So good to see y'all on Zoom last night. But guys, guys, if y'all if y'all are not on our Zoom Sunday school class on Tuesday nights that Brother Larry's leading, oh, holy smokes, y'all need on this. This is a great thing. Uh, we get to see everybody, get to laugh and talk, and man, I mean a powerful, uh, uh, just a, a Sunday school lesson. And I'm so thankful for Brother Larry for doing that. Uh, let's see, continue to remember uh, Robert Hatcher. That's right, Robert Hatcher is not doing well at all. So continue to remember him and Debbie. Uh, Dwight Brown, yes, thank you so much, Lisa. We appreciate that. Uh, Judy puts down Carl Baskins. He has cancer. Okay, we definitely want to, uh, to remember Mr. Baskins. Uh, others, other prayer requests that you might have that you would like to share that we can get down here. Uh, quick shout out to Dan McGraw. Glad you're here, brother. Good to see you last night in Sunday school. Good to see you. All right. Any other prayer requests? We'll take just a little bit of time again. I mean, just as a reminder, this is kind of kind of, kind of a delay, a lag time. So uh, uh, I'm so thankful that we have this opportunity together, but you know, the delay is just a little bit off for me. From Augusta, she is our niece. Okay, well, we are glad that you're here. Very, very good. Zoom is great. We have a great, yes, 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 we do have a good teacher. He is very good, very good. Matter of fact, I would really like to see us, um, I'd, I'd really like to see us do another one uh, on Zoom, another Sunday school, maybe during the day. And so, uh, uh, Dan McGraw, would you be interested in, uh, uh, in in leading like a like a Sunday school class? I'll just throw this out here right in front of everybody. Uh, if you'd like to uh, talk to me about maybe doing an afternoon uh, Sunday school class, maybe on Zoom, we can do it here live. Let's uh, let's let's chat. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, Denny, that's a great prayer request. The small businesses that didn't get the loans, and there's probably more than we realize. Remember that Gloria Scott is here. Hey, right now, everybody say hi to Gloria. She has she has worked so hard this week putting up with me and uh, for the last couple of weeks. So uh, y'all y'all give Gloria some love. Matter of fact, see that heart button right there. Go ahead and hit that heart button. That'll all be for Gloria right there. Hit yeah, hit that heart button that's down there by your comments. Hit that heart button. That's all for Gloria. Let's see here. All kinds of people popping in and out. I love it. So glad to see you. There you go. Hit that Hit that heart button. Hit that. That's all. Gloria, that's for you, lady. See, look at all that love. <laughs> see, look at all that love. That's just for you, sweet lady. You are so precious. I, I, am, I am thankful more than you realize, Gloria, just for, for what you do and, and uh, putting up with me. Oh my goodness, you are a, a treasure, just a, a pure treasure. Thank you for that. Okay, folks, we are going to uh, just go ahead and we're going to open with prayer. Uh, I, I'm loving the love that you're sending, Gloria. Thank you for that. She deserves all of that and a whole lot more. Uh, we're going to open with prayer just uh, right quick, and then we are going to dive into, we are going to dive into chapter 14, kind of wrap it up, and then we are headed into chapter 15 of Exodus. Let's pray tonight. Father God, we love you so much. We thank you for, Lord, just an opportunity to gather tonight just to study your word. Father, I thank you for each one that is, that's here tonight. I thank you for the families that are represented. I thank you for the ones that are watching as a family tonight. Father, thank you so much for that. Lord, I pray for each of these requests that's been mentioned. Lord, lots and lots of pain that's still going on. Lots of situations due to this pandemic that we really don't, don't understand, we don't realize. And Father, I pray, Father, that you will just work all of this out according to your will. 
Father, I pray for all of those on the front lines, all of the, the, the first responders, folks in the hospitals, those uh, in our ambulances, Lord, even our police and our fire, Lord, as they are, as they are still striving to serve and protect, God, I just pray a special protection around each of those men and women. Father, I pray that you will, Lord, just continue to remove this mess from our globe. Father, get rid of it. Father, provide, <coughs> provide a, a, a vaccine, a cure, Father, that'll get, <laughs> get rid of it once and for all. Father, we pray for your wisdom, for your direction as we begin to seek to to get back into what we want to call a normal routine. We know it's not going to be normal, but Father, just to get back to some semblance of routine. Father, give us guidance, give us direction because we want to follow your will. God, tonight as we dive into your word, Father, speak to us powerfully. Speak to us in a fresh and mighty way. Forgive me, Father, where I fail you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Uh, let me see here. We are going to get uh, everything rocking and rolling here. See you. You don't have that. Oh, uh, where's Carrie Lay? Where's Carrie Lay? Carrie Lay, this is just for you, brother. I see. I have to have two cups of coffee, Carrie Lay. And so uh, I got one, and I got another one right beside it. See? Mm. All right, Carrie, that was for you. All right. Uh, let's see here. Everybody in. Everybody in. Okay. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. When we ended last week, you remember when we ended last week, uh, the children of Israel had just got on the dry land and then we saw that the waters that were congealed, that were, that were the walls of water, literally collapsed and came down on Pharaoh, all of his armies, all the chariots, and it came through. I want to pick this up in verse 29 of chapter 14, Okay. This is, this is verse 29 of chapter 14 in the book of Exodus. But the children of it, actually, let's back up. This is verse 28, verse 28. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on the dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Verse 30. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Let's just pause right there real quick. Now we know that there were hundreds of chariots and horses and horsemen and soldiers that were coming to, to chase down the children of Israel. And now then the waters have come over. It's killed them all. Can you imagine what that sight must have been like when they they are now on the safety side of the Red Sea and they look back and the waters are just washing up the bodies and the chariot pieces and, and even the horses. I mean, the bodies are all beginning to just kind of make their way to, to the shore. What do you think that, that must have felt like? to the children of Israel. Now you have to remember, these people have been in bondage for hundreds of years. And so most probably they were physically weak, um, you know, not, not strong enough at all by any stretch of the imagination to have taken on an army. So I would, uh, I'd love your thoughts, you know, now then that they are, literally they're free. Uh, I wonder what they were thinking when they saw what God had done for them and now was, you know, complete freedom. Uh, I hate to say this, but you know, the, the dead bodies must have, have felt like freedom. So uh, what are your thoughts? We'll kind of wait just a minute. Uh, somebody share it with me. What, what are you thinking right about now? What are you thinking? Because there's a lot that's going to come in this very next verse. Now, while I've got you on here and while you're, you're sharing this with me, uh, immediately after our Bible study tonight, immediately after our Bible study tonight, we're going to have a live broadcast in our Facebook group page, okay? Um, and that's going to be for our church members. We have got an emergency 
uh, a business meeting that we need to uh, take care of a small issue. And so we'll be discussing that in our group page immediately after that. So whatever you do, don't uh, don't run away tonight. I need you to stay with me. And then we're going to go to the group just, just shortly thereafter. So just uh, kind of a heads up, okay? Pam, bittersweet. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it had to be bittersweet. Uh, but you know, this is I mean, this is the point of death. I mean, the, the death was everywhere. And so uh, the looks, the smell, I don't know. I don't know. Look at verse 31, okay? Just check out. Check out verse 31. I, I could be so overwhelmed by God's hand of providence and justice. If you get, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would be so overwhelmed. And, and that, you know, that's kind of... Uh, uh, it's kind of true today. What Danny said, wow, we better pay attention to God. See, that, 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 and that's it. And, and I think we're guilty of not paying attention to God. You know, he tells us to do something. We're like, ah, psh, you know, I'll have to do that. Man, I'm just, just straight up, man. I, I mean, if God tells us to do something, guess what? We best be doing it. Uh, because it's not about who likes what. It's about being obedient to God. And uh, boy, we're seeing complete obedience here and complete disobedience. And so uh, I'm, I'm with Miss Denny on this. Yeah, we better pay attention to God. Look at verse 31. This is the last verse in chapter 14. Thus Israel saw, saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Wow, wow. Wow, what a great, great passage. Israel saw the great work that the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Well, I would hope that they would have believed in what God had done because they had, you got to remember, they had just watched God deliver those 10 plagues on Egypt. Then they had just saw God deliver them from bondage of over 400 years. And now they're free and they're out traipsing around and God's, God's guiding Moses. And then he takes them into this little cul-de-sac of death. And then he then opens up the Red Sea for them to cross over safely. And one night gets them over. And then he destroys all of their enemies. And, and did, you, did you realize? Let's see here. Hold on. Doom, 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 doom. Like, like, hey, look back over at verse 13. Will you do that? Look back over at verse 13, okay? Verse 13 says this. Moses said to the people, and we, we talked about this like two weeks ago. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Get, get this, get this. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see again no more forever. That's God keeping his word. God is not going to tell you something and then renege on it, okay? I mean, when God tells you something, it's it's about to happen. And and, and it's just like, uh, 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 Ms. Nancy said, you know, we, we've got to pay attention. We've got to listen to what God is saying because he made it extremely clear back in 13 that, look, guys, you just need to trust me because the, the, the enemy that you see right now, they're about to be gone. You are not going to see them any any more. And so right here, we see it. And then it comes to fruition. Verse 31 again, Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. Have you seen the great work of God? Have you seen the great work of God in your life? Yeah. yeah. That, see, now, now that's what we're talking about. Now, have we seen something of this magnitude? I haven't, I can be honest with you. But I've definitely seen God at work in my life. I've seen God at work in, in, in lives of my friends and my family. So I get it. I get this. And how many times do we know God's in control, but yet we doubt that? Do you ever doubt God? Do you ever doubt that he's going to, to live up to his word, to his promise? Absolutely. We doubt him every, every day. God is a God of his word. If he says it, he's going to do it. We've got to hold on to that. We've got to, got to, got to remember that. Let's keep going. Okay. Uh, Carrie, leave this for you. Okay. Mm. All right. Verse 15. Let's look here how this starts off. Okay. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord, and they spoke, 
say. Okay, let's let's get our notes ready. Okay, because we're we're going to dive deep in, into about the next 18, 19 verses. Okay. This is a song. Okay. This is a song that starts right here in the middle of verse one, and it is going to go through verse 18. Okay, this is a song. Let's uh, let's picture in our mind. Hold on. Okay, in our hymn book, let's just uh, let's just well, no, let's not do that. <laughs> okay, and I know this is backwards to you. Okay, but this is that this is that that favorite song. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And if you'll see, there is three verses, one, two, three, or what we might also call three stanzas, okay? Now, a, a lot of songs, and this is one of them, there'll be verses and a chorus, and the, and the chorus is identical, and you sing the chorus after each verse. That's the way it's typically written. So, Great is Thy Faithfulness has three verses and a chorus, okay? I want us to keep these terms in mind. Okay, as we apply this to chapter 15, because not only do we have Bible verses, but we have song verses or song stanzas. And I, I don't want to, to uh, mislead you. I don't want to confuse you. I want you to understand my terminology. And so as I talk about the song verses, then they're going to be different than a Bible verse. Verse. Okay, so just uh, I hope I made this about as clear as mud for everybody tonight. So let's take a look at this. The first song verse or the first song stanza, okay, is verses one through five. Is Bible verses one through five? If you're taking notes, all right, it's one through five. That's stanza number one. Okay, stanza number two. Stanza number two is Bible verses six through 10, all right? Six through 10. Verse number three or stanza number three is verse 11, 12, and 13. I think that's right. I gotta make sure. Yes, 11, 12, and 13 is stanza. Stanza number number three, okay? And then stanza number four, stanza number four is verses 14 through 17. That's the Bible verses 14 through 17. So we've got four verses in this song, four verses. And they these are divided out in Bible verses one through five, six through 10, 11 through 13, and 14 through 17. And then the tag line of the song, okay, is the tag line, is verse 18. The tag line of the song is verse 18, okay? So, are, are we all good, okay? Are we all good? I hope everybody's on the same page with me because we're gonna look at this in the form of a song. And this is from Moses and the children of Israel. They sang this song after they have now made it to safety. They are on the safe side of the Red Sea. They can look out now and they can see all the death and destruction, but they see deliverance. You see, that's deliverance to them. They know exactly what God has done for them. And so that, and as bad as I hate to say this, but the image of, of the, the death that's there that they see that's the image of deliverance. And you think about this. When God delivers you and me from addiction or, or anything along those lines, when God delivers us and he brings us to freedom and we look back, hey, does that not look like death? Absolutely. Absolutely. A life of addiction is nothing but death. And so this is now where we're beginning to get into because now we can apply it to you and to me today. Okay, now let's go into chapter 15 and we're gonna look at it as a song and we're gonna look at the first stanza, okay? The first stanza. Let's, let's read it, okay? 
Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke saying, okay, here we go. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has thrown, he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Oh my, my. Can you see the celebration that's that's beginning to take place now? Now let's just uh, let, let's just let's just uh, 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 remember something. Y'all know what it's like out here in the sanctuary, and well, I mean we're into one of our old our favorite songs, and everybody in the building knows it. And then all of a sudden the music stops, and all you hear is the voices that are joining together as one, as we praise God and we worship him and we sing to him. Y'all remember that? Okay. I want you to get this in your mind because what you have is what we experience times about three million. Because can you imagine that many people singing to God? Can you imagine what that must have sounded like, but can you imagine what that must have felt like? I mean, you're you're right in in the, the heart of this, and all of a sudden, this praise is just it, it's rising around you. I mean, our praise to God literally needs to rise from the floor and it needs to go up. You see, I'm a firm believer that we need to rethink our praise and worship and our singing and everything because it's not about singing. It's about worshiping a holy God. And that's what these people were doing is they were worshiping him in thanksgiving and song for what they know that God had done for them. And when we gather in this building, when we get to come back together and when we can sing songs, it's not about words on a screen or word in a book. It is about lifting our voices in thanksgiving, in praise, and in glory. I want you to think about this. When we gather as a church family, think about this, Okay. It should be an absolute mind-boggling celebration of God. It should be that we are coming together as a church family, as individuals, and are coming together, and we are one in God. We are one body, and we are rising our voices. We are celebrating God for what he has done and for who he is. Church, if we don't learn anything else out of this pandemic, let's learn this, that our Sunday morning should not be routine. We should be on pins and needles, excited, ready to get in God's house with God's people on Sunday mornings for a mass celebration. That, church, is what Sundays is all about. And that is what I want us to get to here at Ridgewood. When we come back, I want our Sundays to literally take the roof off this building. It is about celebrating a holy God. And it takes every single solitary one of us to come in here with an expectant heart, with an excited heart, with a thankful heart, ready to know that nothing else matters on the planet, but it is a celebration of one. And this is the standard 
of what that should look like because it is sheer deliverance. And I don't know about you, but when I get to 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 have an opportunity to celebrate and to worship God and to dive deeper in his word, then I can literally say that it is an opportunity to say that I have been delivered from the garbage of the rest of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I'm I'm begging you, Richard. Let's learn this out of this pandemic. Let's get routine stomped in the floor and let's start coming together when we gather together in celebration and thanksgiving for what God has done, for what he is or for, for who he is and for what he is going to do in the future. That is what church should look like. That is what gatherings should look like. And here... We've got the, the, the we, we have the standard that has been set. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. Oh my, that should be every Sunday. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. We can kind of substitute each, each week because we can seriously say that Satan's army and his demons have been cast away because God has delivered me. That's the celebration. His chosen captains are also drowned in the sea. The depths have covered them, they sank to the bottom like a stone. Okay, I want you to underline something. I want you to underline something real quick. In verse five, you see the words there that says they sank, they sank, okay? This is a key phrase in this first stanza. Okay, a key phrase that it's, uh, we, can, we actually kind of use it like a buzzword if you want to do, because what it does is it emphasizes the finality of their enemy's defeat. They sank. The children of Israel knew it. And they knew it individually. They knew it collectively. We should be able to put our hearts together each time we gather in order to say our enemies they sank oh my what a what a glorious celebration that we're seeing on the safe side of the red sea let's keep reading let's let's start now in verse six and let's read the second stanza okay this is the second stanza all right Got to, got to get some more coffee. All right, there we go. Okay, verse six. It's good stuff, amen? Good stuff. Hey, if you're enjoying this, if you're enjoying this, hit those hearts again, okay? Let's tell everybody, this is what I like. This is what I needed. This is what I needed to hear tonight. Okay, verse six. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble, and with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them. Verse 10, you blew with your wind, the sea covered them, and they sank like lead in the mighty waters. 
The celebration continues. They understand exactly what God had done. Look at all of these words here. Your right hand has become glorious in power. Your right hand, the Lord, dashed the enemy in pieces in the greatness of your excellence. You have overthrown those who rose against you. We need to sing that song. We need to understand that the God we serve, the same God that delivered the children of Israel, is the same one that we can say, and in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. Man, if, and, and, and you remember what we were talking about in, in uh, 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 Ephesians? The battles we fight are not against flesh and blood. Guys, it's just as plain, it's just as plain as day. It's plain as my coffee cup sitting here. These are the celebrations that we as Christians must have, that we must be able to take day in and day out. They're, 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 I mean, th these guys are rock solid. They're locked in as to know what God has done. Now, look again at verse 10. Okay, look at verse 10. You see those two words again, they sank? You see that? They sank exactly ends the same way stanza one did. Back in verse five, they sank to the bottom like a stone. That's verse five. They sank like lead in the mighty waters, verse 10. So the, the, the stanzas are ending the same in a celebration, if you will, of what I, what I already mentioned, the finality of their enemy's defeat. Church, we, we need to understand that the God of the universe, the God that, 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 that literally spoke our world into existence, has the final word in the finality of our enemy's defeat. Amen and amen. And that's why we celebrate. We must live in a aggressive attack mode against the kingdom of forces that are against us. Because the forces of evil wants to see each and every single one of us fail and I'm talking fail in a grand way. And all I can say is that God is not calling us to run. He's calling us to fight. And we have to trust him in that fight. Look, look at what all, verse nine. I love verse nine. Okay, I gotta go back to verse nine. The enemy said, the enemy and guys, our enemy says the exact same thing to each and every one of us, okay? Or about each and every one of us. I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. If that's not a true description of what Satan and his little, little demons want to do to each and every one of us, they, they are pursuing us, they're wanting to overtake us, and they're wanting to divide the spoil. Thank God. We serve a God that is so much more powerful and he cannot be defeated. There's no force on the planet, in the globe, in the universe that can defeat our God. He is undefeatable. If you write this in the margins of your Bible, my God is undefeatable, cannot be defeated. Okay, that stands in number two. Okay, they sank, key words here. Okay, uh, hey, good stuff, good stuff. You liking this? It's powerful. Oh my word, it's powerful, powerful. Okay, verse 11, verse 11 starts out stanza number three. Okay, this is stanza number three. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Little g gods, okay? Little g, you with me? Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? I can tell you right now, there is not one. There is not one. There is nothing like God. There is nothing that can compare to our God. Who is like you, O Lord, among our God? Okay, remember, let's don't let's don't get this out of context. This is a song of celebration, okay? I mean, these, these folks are locking in, they're loaded. They have come together to worship and to celebrate deliverance. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? 
Does that not describe our God? Oh, oh my, this should be the focus every time we come together. You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them, their enemies. You and your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them to your strength, to your holy habitation. Oh my. What a song of celebration. What a song of celebration. Okay, now when we get to when we get to verse three, uh, or stanza three, stanzas three and four are gonna have the same type ending as verses or stanzas one and two did. Remember, stanza one and two use that, that phrase, they sank. Okay, when we get to stanza number three here, I want to look at the very last line. And what does it say? It says, to your holy habitation. To your holy habitation. What this is, is this is a direct reference to God's holy place. They knew. They knew that they were out of the hands of the devil and that God had delivered them and they were safe in God's holy place. And what better feeling is there to know that you and I can curl up into the lap of a holy God to know that he is the protector and he is the provider? They knew it. They got it. They got it to your holy Habitation. Okay, let's keep going. Verse, Bible verse number 14 starts stanza number four. Okay, here we go. The people will hear and be afraid. Now, the people they're talking about is the, the people of other nations, right? Because Egypt had them as slaves. They're now free. And so they're talking about other people that will hear about what God had done for them. The people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow, sorrow, or we can use the term anguish, okay? Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitant, inhabitants of Philistia. So in other words, Philistia is a country that's where we get the Philistines, okay? Philistines. Good Bible stories in there about the Philistines, so you can kind of do your homework there. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of, of Philistia, then the chiefs of Eden will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab trembling will take hold of them. All the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them by the greatness of your arm. They will be as still as a stone till your people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. Holy cow. The children of Israel now know without question that because they have just experienced, much less witnessed, God deliver them from the Egyptians, that mighty Egyptian army, and not just deliver them, but totally crush the enemy for them. Notice, the children of Israel didn't lay a hand on them. They did not bow up against them and, 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 and dig in and fight. They trusted God and let God fight for them, okay? Key, it's key right here. And when we go back to verse 14 in chapter 14, you might want to make note of this, okay? Verse 14 of chapter 14 says this, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Or in other words, you shall be quiet. That's where you and I have got to get to. We as believers, we have to know that God is going to fight for us and all we got to do is sit back and be quiet. Have, hold our peace. Let God fight our battles. That's what we're going to do. Let me put it to you in gym terms that I have to tell myself. Sit down and shut up. That's what I have to do. 
and let God do what God can do and what God and what only God can do. Sit back and just shut my mouth. That's what I have to do, and let God fight my battles. And that's exactly what he did for the children of Israel. That's exactly what they saw. They experienced it. And now then, because of that, they know that these powerful nations, look here, they, they mentioned it again, uh, the, the inhabitants of, of Philistia, the chiefs of Eden, the mighty men of, of, um, of Moab, all the inhabitants of Canaan, all of that will tremble because of what God did for them. Now that's power. That's power. Okay, let's look at the end of this. Let's look at the end of this. Uh, get back over here. Where, where am I at? Where am I here? Okay, verse 17. We're gonna tag this thing real quick, okay? Let's tag it. Remember I told you that the end of stanzas three and stanzas four, okay, we're gonna talk about God's holy place for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, okay? Y'all see that? For your own dwelling, the sanctuary. All this is doing is this is this is giving us reference to God's holy place. It's that, that place of safety, that place of security. So let's let's understand that, okay? That's exactly what this song is, is taking us to. Uh, when we when we look at this at this song of Moses and the children of Israel, let's understand this. More is involved than just in easily observing the breakpoints. There's so much more here that that uh, that we see. There's so much more that's that's been been breaking it down. You remember, and I've shared this with you. We can never take scripture just at face value. There's so much more depth to it that we have to begin to peel the layers back. And that's one of the reasons why I love Bible studies like this. So we can just sit back and we can literally just inch by inch, peel back the layers and see the depths as to what God is actually doing. It The, the flow, the, the thought, the emphasis here is very interesting. Uh, the, the, uh, the celebration is just screaming off the pages of my Bible. I, I don't know about you, but, but I see the peace. I see the, uh, the comfort, okay? but I see the celebration. I see the <sighs> knowing that they have actually been delivered, that God kept his word and he brought them out. And isn't that how we feel when we see God do something kind of crazy in our life, miraculous? Absolutely. That's exactly what we see. And here we just see it on a grand scale of some three, three and a half million folks. So powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. Verse one, verse one, briefly, briefly, or excuse me, stanza one, that song, verse one, briefly introduces us to God's powerful victory. Stanza two, uh, it, it graphically repeats the victory. And then what it does is it, uh, it, it, it shows how puny the Egyptian army was compared to God. So, I mean, let's just think about it. Any enemy compared to our God, there's no comparison. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Stanza three, uh, it, it summarizes the, the victory. Then then in, in uh, uh, stanza four, it, it picks up and it expands on God's leading his people to their divine assigned home and consequent fear by the other nations, which we've kind of already uh, you know, already touched on. Okay, the closing line, though, the tagline, the tagline. Uh, you know, any good song has a tagline. They, 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 you know, you get to the song and then you repeat it because I mean, it's something you want to, uh, you want to be left with. And, and I know, as a musician, as a singer, uh, I like to make sure that I leave that that one thought in a song. Okay, and so it's generally called a tagline. Look at the tagline, which is verse eighteen. Okay, now if you don't think this won't, you know, just just smack you in the face. Let's look here. Verse 18, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Read that out loud with me, wherever you are. I want you to read this out loud with me. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. That is the tagline of this powerful song that Moses and the children of Israel had just celebrated and worshiped and now at the end of it and the Lord shall reign forever and ever that ladies and gentlemen 
is what we have to take home with us. That, folks, is what we need to hang our hat on each and every day. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. I don't care what happens in the world. You can bring on all the coronaviruses you can throw at us. You can bring on depression. You can bring I'm, anything, anything. Here's the thing. God reigns forever and ever, and he will never be not God. He will never be not in full control. And we have to hold on to that. We cannot worry about what life is throwing at us. And I don't know about you, but I've seen God throw some pretty ugly curveballs at me. And I'm sure most of you can say the exact same thing. But here's the thing. God is never not on his throne and God is never not in control. And so let's just, uh, you know, let's just understand that. That God, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Aren't you glad that God reigns today? Aren't you glad that God is reigning on his throne in control today? Amen, amen, and hallelujah. You can't look at this thing any other way. I mean, you just you just can't. Uh, just some, some real brief quick points uh, as we kind of wrap this up. Uh, uh, no, actually, I, I'm going to let you guys talk. Uh, any thoughts, questions uh, over this song? Uh, something that might have stood out to you. Uh, what has it said to you? What has God said to you tonight here in Exodus 15 in the Song of Moses? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and uh, uh, jump in there. Let me let me hear from you. Mm. Mm. Share with me. Share with me. Man, I'm so thankful for each and every person that has has logged in. I got a lot of folks on here. I got, uh, man, uh, some, some preacher buddies of mine are on here. Thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Uh, I pray you guys have had good online services tonight as well. Hey, come on, share with me. What has, what has this song really said to you tonight? What, what, what has just kind of moved in your spirit? Look, guys, I'm telling you something. Sundays, when we get to come back, we got to come back with a whole different mindset. A whole different heart set, really. Because we gotta come back knowing that we're coming back to 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 come together as one in celebration of, of, of a victory. I mean, because it, we we've got to celebrate victory from the past week and victory for the coming week. And that's what that's what's gotta be. And so I really, really hope that uh, that, that resonates with each of you and each of your families. Because the more that we understand this, the more that we grasp what we're called to do as Christians. The greater the celebration, the greater our witness in our community, the greater the witness in our neighborhoods, and the more people will turn to Jesus, the more that we will see others wanting to know, well, what really is it that they're doing? Hey, Denny, you just, yeah, you're, you're taking the words out of my mouth, Miss Denny. We should celebrate victory so that people want to know why. That's it. When we begin to come together and when we start focusing on what Sunday should be like in our churches. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody and their brother is going to want to know, well, what's going on down there? What's going on down there? Uh, what's Brother Johnny got? We're, we're not much different from the Israelites, much too slow to praise God for his... I, I thank you, Johnny. You're spot on. Absolutely spot on, Johnny. We're much too, much too slow to praise God for his goodness. So I want to I want to encourage you to to help me as we move forward looking at the at the ending of this uh, uh, separation, if you will, of this quarantine. That when we come back together, that we will not come back as business as usual, but we will come back in a celebration that we will come back knowing that each time that we're here, it is to lift God on high, to worship him, to celebrate the victory over our enemies, the victory that we know is going to come, and that we'll dive deeper into God's word each and every time to apply it as we move forward. What's God here? Why are we always surprised at his fulfillment of promises time after time? Gail, spot on. You know, why, why, why are we? That's a great question. Why are we? 
Doesn't it amaze you, though, that we see God do big things for us? And it catches us off guard. And yet we read stories like what we've been reading the past couple of weeks. And we see the deliverance of the magnitude that's coming out of Exodus. And yet we get caught off guard and surprised by what God does in our life. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's good. Great work. Anybody else want to share? Please jump in there. This is a powerful night tonight. Good stuff. Next week, we're going to continue right where we left off. We'll start at verse 19. Uh, and then we're going to look at verse 20 because we're going to get another song that's going to come into play. And this time it's the song of Miriam. And I'm very, very anxious to dive into that. We'll try to get to that next uh, next Wednesday night. Uh, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts before we move on? If, you, if uh, God has really spoken to you, go ahead and hit that heart button again. Let everybody know what's going on in your life. That God has really moved in you. He spoke to you and that you're ready to come back in a in a heart of celebration and a heart of victory and that we're going to approach this very differently uh, as we start to gather again. Let me hear from you tonight. I wish I could reach out and hug every one of y'all right now. I miss you guys so much. I miss, I miss our time together to study, but I am thankful for technology. I'm thankful that we have this mechanism that we can still gather that we can still love on each other. Uh, this coming Sunday, just uh, you know, real quick announcement, this coming Sunday, uh, we are going to be in, uh, in part number two of our Unexpected series, a powerful, powerful passage of scripture uh, about Jesus walking on the water. And uh, please don't miss that. I really want to encourage you to make plans to join us. That'll be Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, you know, get ready, get set up, you know, make sure you've got everything ready to to really spend some time in God's word, uh, invite some folks. Uh, anything that you can do to invite, to tell others, to get folks in front of of uh, their screen, uh, all we're doing is just uh, you know exponentially sharing the gospel. Every time that you share the love, every time you hit that share button, all you're doing is you are getting the word out, and uh, that's that's what we have to do as a family. The more times, the better. The more, the more, the better. Also, Friday night. Friday night at seven o'clock. Now, Friday night, seven o'clock. We're going to come back together right here and we're going to play a good old fashioned game of Bible trivia. And so uh, you're going to have to be real quick on your thumbs to type in the answers. So that'll be Bible trivia right here at seven o'clock. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I love Bible trivia and I love to watch the answers uh, pop up. And uh, I'm going to tell you, you're going to know some, and then there's some you're not going to know. So just as a heads up, okay? So that's Friday night at 7 o'clock. Um, okay, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, know this, I love you. Uh, and as soon as uh, I can get off of here tonight, I'm going to wait just a couple of minutes. I've got to do some things on, on my computer to, to reset this. And then I'm going to go live in our private group. That's for our church members. And we're going to have a uh, emergency business meeting tonight. It won't take long. It won't take long at all. And so I definitely want you to stay right where you are and uh, to, to get on over to the group page and get ready because we'll be live probably within five minutes. And uh, we will take care of uh, just one small, simple matter that uh, uh, we need your help with. Guys, I'm going to get out of here. I love you so very much. Tell somebody about Jesus but hey, will you uh, will you tell somebody about our Bible study? Will you tell somebody about our church? It's facebook.com backslash Ridgewood Baptist. Just encourage any and everybody you see, come hang out with us. Like our page. Uh, anytime that you log on, by the way, if you'll see there's a little box that comes up in the comments that says click here to receive notifications when Ridgewood goes live. Why don't you do that? That way you'll get make sure you get notifications each and every time that, uh, that we go live. 
uh, instead of just, uh, you know, kind of hoping and praying, getting the best here. Okay, good time. And we're, amen. Good study. Thank you guys so much. I love you. I'm going to go ahead and sign out tonight, and I will be over in the group page just real shortly. I love you guys. Have a great week. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.